out our top story today. Fresh chaos for the Tory party. More fresh chaos as two more MPs quit, forcing Rishi Sunak to organise a mini reshuffle. Mini. Well, James Heapy has been replaced by Leo Doherty as Armed Forces Minister. And in a change to the Education Minister role, Robert Halfen has stepped aside and been replaced by Luke Hall. Who? Well, joining us now is City AM's Opinions and Features Editor, Alice Denby, and former Ministerial Advisor, Leon Emerali. Alice, is this just rearranging <laughs> the deck chairs on the Titanic? That is an outrageous <laughs> slur. <laughs> I mean, you know, they've got to fill the jobs, haven't they, if someone yeah, quits? I, th I think what's kind of sad about the state that the Conservative Party finds itself and is people like Robert Halfen are good just man. giving up. A good man, a real champion of kind of blue collar conservative, real, um, real campaigner for more apprenticeships on fuel duty and things like that. 25 years experience and he's thinking, what's the point anymore? And many MPs like him, really good people, are going to be quit quitting or losing their seats the next election. And we're going to see a whole new, uh, probably much less experienced... But, but you see, that is, that is the frustration. And, and we were saying earlier, um, Leon, that... that what happens is you get nearer to an election. Everybody decides, right, do I quit because I've got no chance? Do I align myself to this person because they're going to be the next leader? Do I walk away from... All right. The fact of the matter is, right, and I'm, I'm no fan of, of any of them, frankly, at the moment, why don't they just call a damn general election and get this malaise and this sleepwalking to misery done, man? Because for me, it's ludicrous now. It is yeah, ludicrous, it is. isn't it? It is in a way. I mean, it's very difficult, I think, to see the Conservatives to take any kind of victory or any kind of no. solace into what's going to happen. So it's what's done, going it? on it's in... Done. Well, I mean, everyone's saying that it could narrow the nearer we get to the election itself. When it gets to that campaign between Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer, it might narrow. And I think it will narrow from where it is currently, Mate, but I, not I, enough. Listen, I, I, you know where I stand, right? And I try and be open-minded. Rishi Sunak has been saying that for a year and he has made no difference. He has taken the Tory party backwards from Liz Truss. Well, Just call an election. The, the example I'd give is 2017, when it was Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn. Theresa May was miles ahead in mm. the polls, miles mm. ahead at this stage, and then it got to that head-to-head -head and actually it was frighteningly close and Jeremy Corbyn nearly became Prime Minister. So, you know, it does happen when those short campaigns begin and we could see it happen, but I do think it's slightly wishful thinking to see any kind of, uh, of victory for the Conservatives at this point. Do you think people, some Tory voters, could see this as a, a fresh start for the party, you know, with such an influx of, of new, albeit mm. inexperienced, people in roles? I worked for the fresh start for the Conservative Party. I don't think this reshuffle will be as significant as that. I don't think people are really going to notice. I think, though, on the other hand, people calling for a change of leadership now, I think, have frankly lost their minds. I think, you know, whatever happens, as you say, it's... Um... Why would anybody take that? Would you just go, do you know what I'd be going? If Got I wanted to be the next... I doubt you would. I don't think anybody who wants to be the next leader of the Tory party would think anything differently than, you know what, Sunak? You can shoulder this and do one. That, I, it will, it will, madness, man. Yeah, well, Let him take it. Call it and take it. That's it. I think Ben Wallace put it uh, brilliantly when he said, look, at some point you've just got to put your suit on and march towards the sound of the guns. And I think that's what Well, now, that is a really interesting doing. analogy. I don't know if Nick wants to do this, but I want to talk about the defence thing because Heapy was the armed forces minister who has been making you know, comments about we should spend more. Ben Wallace stalked off well, our longest-serving defence secretary saying we don't even spend 2.5 of GDP. With what's going on in the world, we had Paul Richard is the Labour advisor saying Labour needs to commit to this. I think that Grant Shapps is also on manoeuvres because he started saying yesterday, why is Sunak not listening? That's a traditional Tory value, isn't it? Strong military? It is, and I would keep an eye on what's in the Tory manifesto on that particular point because I do think we are going to move towards right. a number that is closer to 3% of GDP on defence. I agree with you, Jeremy. I think at this point, with Russia as belligerent as they are with our relationship with China now souring, mm. Donald Trump potentially going to be the US president and his views on NATO. I think the UK and other European allies will start spending more on defence. I think Shaps is right and I do think there might be something in the Tory manifesto on that. So if we're going to see, allegedly, it's been flirted with, the idea of a, an election in October, when should we expect to see both parties' manifestos or all parties' manifestos, I should say? Oh, I think isn't technically sort of six weeks you have to for a campaign. Yeah. So I think pretty soon after an election is called, you'll see a manifesto within a, a week or so, I yeah. would reckon. So, so they know what's in there right now, right? I think they'll put, be putting it together. But, I mean, so the Labour Party has to go through incredible contortions to get its manifesto together. It has to go through the unions and the NEC and so on. For the Conservative Party, it's a much simpler to go to the Garrett Club and but, just write it. Yeah, go ahead, I go think a lot of them had, had prepared certainly a lot, a lot of the information for those manifestos when there was that panic a couple of weeks ago. But, but you know, you that know, we like, were going to have a May election. You know the non-dom thing, right? Yeah. 
So it's quite interesting because patently the Labour Party have been going non dumb, non dumb for, for about two years. It's going to pay for everything. What's three billion quid? It's not. The Tories nicked that. I suppose suspect at the moment it's a bit of shadow boxing, right? Yeah. We don't want to show our hand too quickly. But but from a political point of view, um, I, I don't have any sympathy with Sunak because he wanted the job and he and he and he did his best uh, to, to crawl over people to get it. I think his time of reckoning is coming. But we were also talking earlier about what happens after. You look across Europe and you go, OK, so some sort of right-wing-esque parties have risen up. Do you see that happening here or do you see that the Tory party reinventing itself, starting again? I think it depends a lot on the scale of the defeat and, yeah. and who's left. So I actually think what's more likely to be kind of the remainder of the Conservative Party after this election will actually be the more sort of one nation... Um, Do you? ..southeastern seats. And I think a lot of the kind of red wall seats um, will, uh, you know, the right will be split uh, by reform up there. So I actually think that the, that the MPs who'll be left actually will be, I think, less sympathetic yeah. to, to that more right-wing populist. I think history tells us the Tories lose an election and usually they, they say to themselves, because we weren't right-wing enough, mm. they then lose the next election and then they coalesce around someone who's in the centre and then they tend to get back into power. We saw that with David Cameron after John Major uh, and, and several leaders in between that didn't quite make it. So I do think it's going to be interesting for the party, but there is clearly a clamour, I think, for more right-wing policies, for lower taxes. This is brilliant. Of... I've just had a, a WhatsApp message from Jonathan Gullis. Oh, he has. Uh, hello, buddy, how are you? Sorry I didn't pick up. Um, bit of a, a crazy day yesterday, but we fight off. That's the new deputy chairman of the Tory party. Well, Very interesting. interesting. What do you make of his appointment to deputy chairman? I think Jonathan Gullis is an interesting character. I think that he maybe plays out well to a certain demographic that in the Red Wall, the Northern Conservatives. I think he has a role to play. Passionate. Um, passionate, for sure, but also divisive. And I think that's difficult for him uh, and for the party to square. And, Alice, we were talking about this in the previous hour to Alicia Fitzgerald. Do you think that it's a wise uh, appointment because he's very much in the same lane, we could say, as Lee Anderson? Or is it a foolish appointment because he's in the same lane as Lee Anderson? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it would be a mistake for the Tories to try and compete with uh, re with reform. Yeah. I think that a lot of voters um, who switched to the Conservatives in the 2019 election, uh, you know, are not traditional Conservative voters. And Don't you vote... remember what Boris said? Oh, You've what? lent us your vote. We have to prove that, that le you lending it was the right thing. And did he? So, they got rid of him. If he'd had to have swallowed this, I guess he'd have swallowed it. I still maintain, I know all about Partygate and everything, I have a very strong belief, which nobody will change, I don't believe it was right for Major, I don't believe it was right for Rishi Sunak, I don't believe you should be the Prime Minister of this country until the British people have voted for you. And all the people will go, yes, Jeremy, but it's about the Tory party. No, no, no. For me, more than ever before, it would be like Blair, OK, being usurped. Blair won in 97 because he was Tony Blair. Boris Johnson won in 2019 because he was Boris Johnson. And if people were, as I know they were, that unimpressed with Boris Johnson, they should have thrown him out of the general election. Not a bunch of Tory MPs who have torn themselves to shred and torn the party to shreds. That's he, a true comment. He did resign, though. For, but Nick, everybody resigned and he had nobody left there on his own like this. But, like the, you know, are. there were votes of no confidence, etc. You could on. also argue he, he ended up leaving the job because he was Boris Johnson. Yeah, he did. Yeah. I mean, I, I, sorry, Alice, I, I think his character, Boris Johnson's character, was part of his downfall as well as his massive appeal that a lot of people The Tory see. party wouldn't be where it is today. I agree with Jeremy. I, th I think if, if Boris Johnson was still in power, I do think the polls would be narrower. I Much. think that there would be a lot more of a lot more division in politics. That's not, is, by the way, me Marmite. condoning anything that he got wrong. My, my my overriding emotion about Johnson is complete frustration and anger that an 80-seat majority was squandered by stupid, pathetic mistakes. Because what we're looking at, and, and I'd love your opinion on this, Nick, both of you, when would the tourists ever get back in the next 10 or 15 years if they have to go back and reinvent themselves? But here's the interesting thing. Four years ago, would any of you sat here with T Jeremy Corbyn, the momentum running Labour, it's worst ever... Would you have thought they were heading for a majority? Four years later, something that happened to the Labour Party has to happen to the Tory party and pretty quick. It's not that bad, because I think Jeremy Corbyn had the full mechanics of the Labour Party yeah. wrapped up. The Conservative Party are far more focused on winning. And we could even okay. see a change of leader before the next election, but they are not as bad in the situation as Labour were at that point, I would say, Jeremy. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Well, thank you so much to Alice Denby from City AM and former Conservative advisor Leon Emirali. Well